a little guilty about it, but I also, you know, knew that I, I knew that I would make a difference. And I was like, I'll never, I'll make sure that other girls don't have to do that anymore. That other, like Chloe Wongs are not gonna have to do that. And um, in Chinese culture, you know, your father's last name is, a, is, a, is really important. So my dad's first name is Bennett. So that's where Chloe Bennett comes from. So. And it's, I booked the first role after I changed my name, by the way, wow. the first thing I booked, right. which, is the same, which is crazy. Right. And I don't know how I feel, I have mixed feelings about it. But it, it, it's my journey, it's the path I took, and you know, I, I, I'll own it now, but I do have mixed feelings on, on doing, making that decision. Yeah. Camilla, I, I read an interview that you gave where you talked about early auditions when you were told you were um, not Latina white enough, enough or not yeah. urban enough, or yeah. whatever. I've always kind of lived in this in-between of just being like ethnically ambiguous, like what, what is she? And in my first year of auditioning after I got an agent, I was just, I kept going out for Latina roles, but I was never booking them because their idea of what a Latina looked like was more urban, as they love to say. Um, and it's like, I always felt like the whitest person in the room. And I, you know, when you're in New York too, the auditions you go for, they're like these kind of, um, it's like underprivileged, you know, like you're going for shows like Blue Bloods and like, you know, all the other crime shows that shoot in New York. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, and I, I just, I, I was like, look, I'm Latina, I'm Brazilian, I'm not Dominican, but I'm Latina. Okay. <laughs> um, and and I, I felt like I didn't have a place in this industry either, because I'm like, well, if I'm not white enough and I'm not Latina enough, then where do I fit? And also, why do I have to be fit your idea of what a Latina looks like if I'm, like what you said, I'm fully Latina. Like both parents, fully Brazilian, I'm Brazilian. Can I just play Latinas, please? <laughs> but isn't that so frustrating? It's like, who, are, who is at the other end of that question? Yeah. You know? And, and I mean, what is, I, what is it like to, to be almost a asking those questions of whatever it is, whatever you know, sexist or racist or marginalizing question that is being asked about you, and do you just wanna just like, where do you go? Do you go anger? Do you go like, I'm gonna change this? I think you just, sometimes it's, uh, unfortunately, for me at least, it just got lucky because when they were casting Riverdale, they made Veronica Latina, and you know, when they first released the breakdown, um, I figured she was gonna be like a white girl with dark hair, like she is in the comics, like a pinup type. So I, I completely didn't think I would even go out for it. And then I saw that they were making her Latina and I was like, wait, I could actually, like this, this can work. And they weren't even trying to like force this heritage on her, like, ooh, she's Latina. Like we're just right for the role. Yeah, exactly. You were her. And I, exactly and I was Latina and that's enough. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to, hit it over the head and like kind of I feel like a lot of times now people are trying to like fill quotas or you know what I mean like they're trying to just like force diversity to make a point instead of just being like we should just embrace diversity and and play these characters because we deserve to yeah um I have motivation that isn't a catalyst for the male in the show and that's the, you know that's what makes my character uh dynamic because she has serious moments of weakness, and the, the biggest thing is, you know, I, I think it, flaws are really important to have in, in characters, especially that are women, because, you know, it's just dynamic. I mean, it's just, I don't know, it's just a weird question. I don't know yeah. if it's an insult or not. Okay, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like it's a tricky, that's a tricky line that we walk as marginalized actors, because we have this large conversation about representation and we want that representation to exist. We want strong female characters, we want black characters, we want Asian characters. Um, but there's this, th there's this awareness that I have at least that part of the reason why I'm able to create representation is because of the level of accessibility that I have. Mm -hmm. And there's a part of that that is not in alignment with what I believe in in terms of we do this playing the game thing where we know that we're contributing to a system that perhaps we don't fully believe in, but at the same time, it's worth it to sacrifice some of that in order to create the representation that we want to see. Absolutely, it's a give and take in a lot of different ways, and it's, it, it, it can be very difficult. Yeah, yeah it's, it's challenging, and so I think it requires us to have this, this high degree of self-awareness. 
and as we navigate our careers, knowing that there's a certain amount of privilege in whatever form our identity takes that allows us to create that accessible, maybe sometimes corporate version of whatever identity we want to see represented. But at the same time, it's a big we have to do it because then it, it opens up potential doors. Yeah, Jody, how was that for you uh, navigating navigating this this new world in a show that was uh, largely staffed by men and certainly starring mostly men? Yeah, and the, you know, it's a really new. I'm curious, what is it the thing where you feel like? that's a character I have to play, and the flip of that, if you feel like this is a character I'm never gonna play. Sure, it de definitely goes both ways. Um, for me, I just look for truth in the story, whether it's comedy, whether it's drama, it has to be rooted in truth. And if I feel like, I think as actors, one of the things that we do, even though we're playing different characters, what makes a character or, or makes a, a performance believable is when the actor has been able to find a bit of themselves in that character, so that's where the truth comes. And I need to feel the same way about what it is that I've read. You know, when I put it down and I'm like, oh, yeah, that made me feel all types of stuff. That's the piece I want to be a part of, whether it's one scene or several scenes. And you're obviously, <coughs> excuse me, directing now, and I'm curious, um, for the rest of you, is there a different, is there a different... Um, I've said this in another panel, um, I directed the finale of Insecure, and I, thank you, my DP was a woman, and my first AD was a woman, so the three of us were just like some badass broads feeling like, you know, I said the holy trinity, we were just like... <laughs> Just, it was so empowering and there was a shorthand with our communication I think just because we could recognize those moments that are tense and how to navigate for each other with each other and I think that happens as an actor when I'm working with a female director unfortunately there's only been like four female directors in my 30 something year career that I've worked with that's crazy. that's ridiculous yeah. You know, um, well, twenty-eight percent of TV directors are women. That's an alarming number, right? And how many women are in the world, right? <laughs> right. It's yeah. crazy, but uh, I, yeah, I definitely feel like when I've had those moments being directed by women, I just again, I feel like there's this shorthand that's there. There's this sensitivity that's there in a powerful way. I think it's. You know, we use the words, I, I'm, I'm always leery about using the word sensitive along with woman because so often it's thought of as a negative when actually, uh, usually with sensitivity, I think of love and leading with love. Um, so maybe that's what it is, I'm feeling more of the love. So I'm gonna take sensitive back and say, I feel more love. <laughs> How about for the rest of you? Do you feel a difference when you're being directed by a woman? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I'll be really quick. I'm like, you, you're so, this, I've been lucky enough to be directed by women, but the percentage is terrifying and small. And it's always been, you know, incredible. And I think you sum it up with that sense of, it's the like choice of word, isn't it? Yeah. It's so sensitive. But then it's like, oh, well, does that mean that? And, but yeah, come on, your, your answer would be yes. Um, I had the privilege of working with three female directors in a row. Um, oh, wow. How that's happened. Yeah. Um, I feel very honored. Hopefully it gives you some hope. Um, and something that I've noticed is that I think men have this notion that power is gained through dominance, whereas women understand that power is gained through allowing the space for trust. And I think that's what female directors do. They allow the space for trust. They, they allow the space for people to do their best work and allow it to be collaborative so that instead of people doing what they're told to do out of a place of fear, they do it out of a place of wanting to contribute to something larger than themselves. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, everything about it is different. It's nuanced, it's different the way the crew is, it's different 
you know, that yeah. it's different, the little, you know, because I play such a badass character and I, I, I constantly have to fight, not fight, I constantly fight with myself to make sure that those moments aren't just me acting more stereotypically masculine. I want her. I want her to kick ass in the most feminine, beautiful way possible, and like it, her to be vulnerable. And that to me is strength. Right. And so that's. An, and I love hearing feedback. It's jarring when you get, have a woman and they they whisper something to you that you've never heard before, and you go, "Oh my God, that makes so much sense." I connect with you. You get so used to having to kind of having to explain yourself to men a lot, and it's just nice. And there's a shorthand. You just have. Let's work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's interesting when you think about words like, like sensitive or vulnerable, yeah. words that, you know, just taking those words and reframing them as positives, even though society tells you not on me to give just as much to the actor when the camera's on them because it makes everybody's performance better. And I really didn't understand what she meant like about that because that time I was in an environment where all of the actors were doing that. So when I, after 227, and I started working on movies, you know, noticing, you know, the cameras, some of the, the person that's the biggest star, they're doing their coverage first, and, you know, they're like kicking ass, and then turn the camera on me, and they'll turn like into Michigan Jet. And I'm like, wow, this is what she's talking about. But she's like, who the hell is Michigan J? No, not that. I'm like, that's so depressing. I know. Yeah. I've been like, oh, yeah. I won't say any names. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I've never up. Yeah. Oi! Yeah. Oi! Yeah. Oi. Yeah. Oi. yeah. <laughs> Still here. <laughs> I've been. Yeah. And, it, it, and it's funny that that happened. And then I work on Jerry Maguire with Tom Cruise. And he was the, he was just, so lovely and I just want to give him his props because I was expecting to have another version of that and it was time for my coverage and he left the set and I was like yeah here we go you know he's probably gonna have his stand and read lines with me and he just went to go clean off some of his makeup so he could come he was like no 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 I'm, I'm here for you and I was like <sighs> so it's, it's it's great it was great to know that you can be that big and not forget where you're from. Because I think there's a, a lot of those actors that I'd worked with prior to that moment probably were initially off camera given it. But, you know, success brings laziness sometimes. Yeah. How about the rest of you? Any words of I, wisdom? Yeah. Maid Shinomic, who plays um, Betty's mom on the show, and who was in Twin Peaks. So she, you know, she went through her whole moment when Twin Peaks came out, and she, like, right before, the day before our show came out, she told me and Lily, because, you know, we're playing these best friends on the show, and we're two leading females, and, like, she was like, people are going to want to put you two against each other. They're going to want to compare you constantly, and they're going to try to just make you guys hate each other, you know, because we're different, you know? And I, I realized that like I can start to I start to see that you know like everywhere every comment you read or like the blonde's hotter or like you know everyone's kind of making those comparisons and Mason was like don't let the media mess up your friendship like you guys have such a beautiful friendship and you're different different opportunities are going to come to you because you look different you act different you talk different but don't use that as a means of of making one feel lesser than. You know, you guys are you guys can both exist equally and and have successful careers and they're gonna go in different directions. At some point one of you might have more attention than the other, but never let that get in the way of your friendship, you know, and your support for each other. And I thought that was super valuable because I think we're always taught as women to compare ourselves to other women. Yeah. And it's harmful, it just kind of messes up the dialogue. Any other words of wisdom that you got along the way? I was really, it was more of an observational thing, so when I was, uh, I don't know how long ago it was, I feel like I'd just left drama school, I was really lucky and I got a job on a show in the UK that has all of our kind of greats in it and I was sat on set in a massive circle and everyone's on chairs just having your cups of tea in between takes and there was 
probably 12 cast members, you know, one of which was Judy Dench, and the other one was, you know, Melba Staunton, and we had just this kind of, um, there was me and um, another uh, actress, uh, Michelle Dockery, and we were just kind of sat there, and we were a part of this circle. No one was in a trailer, hide it. Everyone was chatting and talking about, anything and everything and I thought if that's if Judy Dench if you're my number one on set and I can sit next to you and have a cup of tea and actually be included in this circle of actors so because we're all doing the same job and you know everyone everyone on the crew's name <coughs> you know everyone and it's not because you've ever shouted at anyone it's just because you're is and you're lovely and, and I just we like sat there and we're like yeah this is you know this is for us how ace is it going to be when because you know we'd gone to drama school together as well so for us like in you know however many years if we're sat there on a job back again with people we've collected on the way because we've worked with them and we're all sat chatting to I suppose the next generation of actors in in that open-hearted sense where it's a real conversation and it's and it's no effort no ego and there's no hierarchy. I just thought that's that's how to be on set is to be to be to be everyone's mate. Because nicer things happen when we are a, a team. And like you say, there is a, such a weird thing that we would that the sisterhood or the our actresses don't get on or aren't for, like who made that up? Because we do, you know, we've all just met, and it's it's a. It's been a lovely, hilarious chat on the stairs down there. There's none of the thing that we're kind of, that we're kind of told to be. It's like in like me in this whole city with boondocks paraphernalia. Like that's, and the show hasn't been on for years. So just the devotion that Comic-Con fans have is just the coolest thing. I mean, I, part of me wishes I could just like put on a mask and just sit and watch the cosplay. <laughs> all day just on 6th Avenue, just taking it in. It's it's really, the dedication is amazing. It's, it's, it's so, it, it, what's so moving about it all I find is that, you know, we walk, we were looking enough to kind of like walk out onto the floor and there was the, kind of by the, the Doctor Who stand. And, and there was the cosplay for it, you know, it's like you, our, our season hasn't come out yet and there's people dressed as the Doctor and it can be that that costume, it's just the Doctor's costume, it's not referenced to anything other than that character, so it doesn't mean if you are a guy or a girl or from wherever you are in the world, that you, you, only you can wear it, it's like you're wearing a costume and that's what I love, the celebration of fandom and the celebration of, of your heroes and you don't, they don't, you know, you, anyone can be their hero here, and that's brilliant. And, you know, I think the next thing will be is if I ever walk down the street and see someone just dressed as the doctor randomly, not in Comic Con, that'll be, that'll be a real high. <laughs> that's coming. <laughs> that, that might hurt. <laughs> Chloe, I know you've seen yourself out here. I time. know. There's, <laughs> I've seen a bunch of queens this year, too. It's so, I mean, it's the. It, it makes me emotional every every time I see, especially you know young girls and boys and um, it, there's such a power in a costume and clothing and how you present yourself um, and to see you know young people or old people be people of different colors and shapes like feel empowered that's just so amazing it's at the point where because I have a really heavy hand in and the design of the suit and like they're super lenient with them and they're super collaborative on the show so I always make sure it's something that is accessible for fans to make now I'm I like in the fittings I'm like well the, the, this will be easier for people to cosplay so so for anyone who was in the panel the other day I said sloth so I'm going to change it from Goonies so I'm changing it now I would love to totter around as E.T. <laughs> Ideally, someone would ride a bike and I'd just sit in the front, yeah. asking, <laughs> and then just be taken around like the star I am. I don't even walk. I'm a that big a deal. <laughs> That's what I do. Oh, so, is there any more really classy, mature answers coming? <laughs> Did you say you said sloth? Sloth in, in the yeah. panel for, for oh, ZT is close. That's a nice. Well, yeah, yeah, sloth, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Hey, yeah. Same, same. Uh, oh, nice. How about the rest of you? Uh, does anyone play Telltale games? 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Um, I wanted to cosplay this year, but I don't have time. But I wanted to cosplay Clementine from The Walking Dead. So. Oh. Gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm about to show my age again. <laughs> it would probably be because it was a cartoon that I loved when I was a kid. So it would probably be like Firestar from Spider Man and his amazing Whoa! friend. Whoa! <laughs> that was heavy. <Whoa! laughs> no, because I'm in the costume so much, I just want to be comfortable. You know? <laughs> like, what's the most comfortable cosplay? Like, I don't is know. Is there a superhero in sweats? No face. Yeah, like <laughs> they should wear sweatpants. I feel like you really would get the most done. Because you're the most mobile. I don't want to rub it in, yeah. but my costume is really comfy. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. It is. She's <laughs> really <laughs> comfortable. Oh, what can I say? You can run about. You don't need to pull. I sweat. No, they're all practical. That makes more sense. Maybe really Jean Grey. Maybe Jean Grey. Yeah. Woo! Woo! It's a it's a pro. Pro. You know? Yeah. yeah. How about you, Camila? I've been like sitting here thinking. We don't <laughs> Um. I honestly, I feel like I'd want to do Toad from Mario Brothers, <laughs> but like a cute Toad, like a sexy Toad. <laughs> toad, but make it fashion. <laughs> Can we come back next year? Yes, yeah. yes. Just well, you just told everyone, so now yeah, you're yeah. not be able to walk to the floor. But yeah, we <laughs> yeah. see five slots. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Well, I just want to thank all of you.